Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So in our last lesson, we closed off by talking about breaking a protein down to elucidate its amino acid sequence. And now we want to go in reverse. What if there's a particular peptide or a protein that I want to build? So today, that's what we're going to be talking about, peptide synthesis. And the process we're going to be talking about is something called the Merrifield process uh, after Bruce Merrifield, who uh, created this back in the late 60s. Okay, so let's just jump right on in. Okay, so now, so let's go, uh, let's use blue. So, okay, we're choosing. So we can synthesize. small peptides, peptides with a sequence of our choosing. So now if there's a particular sequence that I need, I need the peptide, I can actually do it. The sequence of our choosing. And by small, we generally mean up to about uh, 100 amino acids. Up to about 100 amino acids actually do that pretty well. And we also have methods for attaching these fragments to create larger proteins. Fragments to create larger proteins. So before, we took a large protein, we fragmented it, we sequenced the fragments. Now we're just going in reverse. We're creating sequences up to about 100 um, amino acids long, and then we can take those, let's say, five fragments, stick those five fragments together, and create a really large protein. This is really, really fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do, so we'll describe the synthesis of a peptide on a solid support. And I'll tell you what that means in just a second. And this is called the Merrifield peptide synthesis. Okay, so the Merrifield peptide synthesis. So here's the general scheme. Here is the general scheme. Okay, now this thing that we call a solid support, all these fancy terms, uh, I tell you, you're gonna run across all kinds of fancy terms in um, biology, physics, chemistry, and science in general, and I, well, I guess they're necessary. I don't know. I, I've, the, the part of me always wonders whether they actually are necessary. Why don't they just call things for what they are? But I guess you know how it is. You have to give things certain names. So, okay. So, solid support, it refers to insoluble polymer beads. So, just think of really, really, really tiny, small pieces of plastic. That's all it is. So a solid support refers to insoluble polymer beads that have reactive chemical groups attached to them. Chemical groups attached to them. And they look like this. So I have this uh, yeah, I guess I can do this in blue, it's not a problem. So I have this bead, and then in this particular case, the group that I have attached to it. Um, yeah, it's fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do it down here, CH2Cl. So this is our polymer bead, so this is the bead, 
and it is insoluble, so it doesn't dissolve. You can actually see it like sand at the, you know, the bottom of a glass of water. And this is our reactive chemical group right here. In this particular case, it happens to be an alkyl halide. Alkyl halide, chlorine, alkyl halide, this chloride, this chlorine is going to be a good leaving group, chloride, so you can imagine the chemistry is going to take place right here. Some nucleophile is going to come in and it's going to displace the chloride. So this is the reactive chemical group. So basically the chemistry takes place here and basically this solid support, because we can see it, always see it and keep track of it, we're just going to build the molecule in a long chain all along there. And when we're done, we're just going to pull the beads out and they're going to have these hairs of peptides. That's all that's happening here. So a solid support refers to the insoluble polymer beads that have reactive chemical groups attached to them. Really, really tiny pieces of plastic that have these chemical groups attached to them and the reaction can take place. That's it. And because they're insoluble, we can keep track of them. We can filter them. Okay. So, so what we do So what we do is we start with a bead and just add amino acids one at a time and just add amino acids extending from the bead. That's it. So basically, let's just take our, you know, we have some, uh, some bead like that. Well, we add an amino acid, that's one. And then we add another amino acid, and then we add another amino acid, we add another amino acid, we add another amino acid. We go as long as we want, and we know what sequence we're going in because it's the sequence of our choosing. When we're done, we split this, we break that bond. There we go. We have the protein that we wanted. And because we're actually just adding one at a time, we can always keep track of this because it's insoluble. We see it, we know exactly where it is, and it's very, very easy to deal with. It's a fantastic, fantastic procedure. And in fact, it's fully automated. So you just put the reagents in and you let the machine do your work for you. You come back a day or two later, depending on how long you want your protein to be, it's done, it's ready to go. Okay, now, okay. <clears throat> in the body, Proteins are synthesized, so proteins are built from nitrogen end towards the carbon end. In other words, from on a piece of paper, they're built from left to right, from nitrogen to carbon, nitrogen toward carbon. Okay, so in the Merrifield synthesis, it happens in reverse. In the Merrifield process, synthesis is, I wrote the N and the C in the same place, but now I reverse the arrow. It goes from the carbon end to the nitrogen end. So when we build this protein, we're building it from the carbon, we're going to the left, right? Because we're adding this first and then we're adding something to the left of it, to the left of it, to the left of it, to the left of it. So it's in reverse, but again, the final product is what's important. But you should know that in the body, it's actually built from N forward. You're adding amino acids. Here, you're adding amino acids backward. That's it. You're starting from the carboxyl end and you're going back that way. Okay. So let's go ahead and illustrate the procedure uh, with an example. With We're actually going to build a tripeptide. So let's...